Happy Wednesday, Lewis Chapel. <clears throat> Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. We came in the house of the Lord to rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, just begin to worship. Just begin to lift up sweet praise unto our Lord. God, we thank you for your provision. God, we thank you for your protection. God, we thank you for your love, your kindness. Oh, God, we thank you. just for life hallelujah hallelujah we came to give god glory hallelujah for lord you are good come on somebody say lord you are good and your mercy endures forever hallelujah just give god praise hallelujah Thank you. 
for your mercy and your grace. God, you are a wonderful Father. God, you're so strong and loving and kind. We thank you for being our example of love, for you are love, God. We thank you for being our example of grace, God, for you are grace. And for this, we lift up our hands in worship. God, we just lift up our hands in this place, for you are a way maker, God. You're a miracle worker, a promise keeper. Thank you for keeping your promise. Hallelujah. Come on, we lift up our hands in the sanctuary as we worship, worship, worship. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are here and 
you're working in this place. I worship you. Come on, somebody worship. I worship you. You are here moving in our midst. Thank you, God. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, I worship you. Come on, can we lift up the chorus? We say, Waymaker, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, help us sing it. Waymaker, say it. Waymaker, miracle worker, miracle worker promise, keeper, promise keeper, light in the darkness. In the darkness That's who my God, that is who Come on, let's take it back. You are here, you are here touching every heart. Touch every heart. Come on, say, God, I worship you. I
Let the church say amen. 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 God's grace and peace be with each and every last one of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, anybody glad about God's goodness? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Listen, a few things I'll share with you, and then we're going to get into tonight's lean-in Bible study. I want to talk after... Last Wednesday, well, actually two Wednesdays back, when I taught on how the resurrect, how the crucifixion came about, and the things that transpired from Jesus being arrested up until him taking his final breath, what happened Sunday morning, being early. There are there are three things, or really five, but I really don't have time to discuss three of them. Uh, so there are five, but for tonight I'll discuss three things that happened when Jesus died. Three things that happened when he died, and when he was in the process of dying, that I want us to discuss. It's good biblical knowledge, y'all, good biblical knowledge for us uh, to have. And then, and then we'll, once again, we will get back to our Rooted and Fruited uh, series, but I, I want to I pause from that series to cover some of these some of these good biblical truths and timeline of what happened with our Lord and Savior, because that's just good for us to know, and good for us to know the blessing of that story. Now, we are officially in homecoming season, y'all. We are officially in homecoming season. Yeah, it's on. It is on. And our theme for homecoming is we are family. You know that's why we call each other brother and sister, right? Because we are family in the body of Christ. So, hey, my brother, hey, my sister, we are family. And uh, what is family if we don't get together and eat and have a good time? So in that week, we're going to be getting together. We're going to be eating over here. We're going to be eating over there. We're going to be eating everywhere. All that, that, uh, that Wednesday night, that Wednesday night, our young adult ministry, uh, the New Wave, they have organized a phenomenal pep rally. We'll go out to our uh, recreational athletic complex, uh, John D. Fuller Rack uh, on Old Bunce Road. It is, we've been trying to get E.E. E. Smith to be a part of our pep rally, but it never worked out, and it never worked out, and it never worked out, you know, and I've been really, um, I've really been wanting them to come because if memory serves me correctly, they are the oldest his, uh, black high school in Fayetteville. Y'all know how I am. I was like, we got to partner with them. So, uh, so they're coming, and several other high schools are coming. They'll be there. This is going to be a good, good time. And then on that Friday, this brand new. I mean, this hot off the presses. Matter of fact, y'all hearing this before anybody else have heard this. See, when, when, you, when you're part of Wednesday, y'all get, get to hear stuff for everybody else. We're going to have a basketball game on Friday. Now, the organizer of the basketball game, I don't know why he want to get beat so bad. But I ain't got no problem with that. We're going to have a good time. That Friday, uh, that Friday we're going to do basketball. That Saturday, we're going to go out. <laughs> yeah, there it is. We're going to go. We're going we're gonna to golf. 18, 18 links is... Uh, now, we need y'all to register. Get your team. Uh, get your team. It's $45 per person to register for that. But it's a $500 uh, prize. There is uh, for, for the uh, winning team. And if you don't know, it's something called Captain's Choice. That means all four of y'all get a ball to hit, but the best ball is where you, you pick the best ball, and then all of y'all kind of hit from there, and then you go to the next one. I was like, oh, I can do that. Cause that means I only need one good person on my team. You know? So just, and, I, and, I, and I'm looking for that. I'm looking for that one good 
person. So get your team together. Get your teams together. Register by the 12th. And then on that Sunday, we're going to have a grand carnival and games and food trucks. And, uh, oh, and remember, everybody gets to eat at the food truck for free who come to church that morning. You will still be able to eat at the food truck. It'll just cost you. But if you come to worship, we will give you a ticket. With that ticket, you'll be able to get a free dessert at the dessert trucks. And with your other ticket, you'll be able to get a free meal. Did y'all get, the, did y'all get the, the main word in there? You'll be able to get a free meal. So, uh, but if you don't come to church, you don't get a free meal. So, but if you come to church, we'll make sure that we put a ticket in your hand and you get to get a free meal. Uh, but we're going to have a wonderful and terrific time. But before we get to all of that, Sunday, Sunday, I am going to be preaching a sermon called Stay in the Light. It is a, it is something that God laid on my heart as I was traversing through a very dark period of my life. And what God blessed me with and how he brought me through it and how he brought me out of it, I cannot wait to share with you what God blessed me with. And that'll be Sunday, 11 o'clock, stay in the light. See you there. All right, now, it's time to give. It's time to get Now, if you have... If you've never been in a dark place, this word is still for you because your dark place may be coming. So I'm looking forward to Sunday. I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. I'm looking forward to seeing how God blesses us through that preached word. Now, let us prepare to give. Four ways you can give. Four ways you can give. It used to be three. Now it's four. Um, you can give in the envelope, of course. You can give at lewischapel.org. That's L-E-W-I-S chapel.org. You can give uh, through an app called Givelify. You can give through an app called Church Center. All these ways have been made available so that none of us have to miss the blessing of giving. Amen. So let's, let's pause. Let's bless the Lord through our giving. Everybody lift 
so I will. He has done great things for me, so I will. He has done great things for me, so I will. He has done great things for me, so I will. He has done great. He has done great things for me. 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 He has done great things for me, so I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. All right, here we go. Here we go. If you have not already, if you have not already liked this on whatever platform you are watching, if you have not already shared this on whatever platform that you are engaging with us with, please do so. That allows us to reach more people, and the same ministry that is blessing you gets to be a blessing to somebody else. Thank you so much. Oh, we got a, listen, we got a poll up, a live poll on Facebook right now. Are you excited for homecoming? It, we, we, we trying to we trying out some new stuff. Uh, good, good job, um, digital media team on that. So. Oh, voting has ended, so <laughs> I didn't know we were doing that. I would let you know ahead of time, but I'm sure we'll have something else in a little while. Now, there are five things that happen. As Jesus was on the cross, and ultimately died on the cross. And I want to discuss these things tonight, that as Christians, that as believers in God and followers of the way, because you know before they called us Christians, they called us followers of the way. The reason they called us followers of the way is because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So before they called us Christians, they said, they are followers of the way. Jesus hung on the cross. And as Jesus hung on the cross, there are some things that happened. Some of these things you may be familiar with. Some of these things you may be hearing for the first time. All these things are important for us to have a foundational understanding. Now, I will say this from the outset. This is going to raise some questions in your sanctified mind. And I'm going to tell you right now, I probably don't have the answers. Any Pastor, preacher, minister, whoever that stands before you with all the answers don't know what they're talking about. The Bible is full of mystery. Even the Apostle Paul said, Behold, I share with you a mystery. So, as I share this with you, there will be some questions that pop up in your head. Maybe I'll have the answer to some. Maybe I will not. But I am comfortable with telling you that I don't have all of the answers. And anybody tell you they do is not telling you the truth. That's pride talking. That's arrogance talking. Now, okay, here we go. First thing up, like I'll do this in chronological order. I like to move in chronological order. I don't like to bounce around. So I'm, I will cover this in the order that it happens in the Bible. First up, the, I'll call this first part, do your job. Do your job. All right. Uh, what do you do if somebody refuses to do their job? You show them how to do it, all right? You show what 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 does what do anybody do if somebody refuses to do their job? You give them a talking to, write them up. Okay, what is, is there any anything else if somebody refuses to do their job? It's their job. You understand? It, it is it is what they it is what they are supposed to do. They are at the job to do that job, and they don't do that job. Any complain? Well, fire. Walk away. Give him a whooping. <laughs> Nobody gonna say tell the manager. I, I figure somebody say tell the manager. Man, put him on probation. Okay, because when you have a job, you're supposed to do the job, right? 
So what is the sun that hangs up in the sky? What is the sun's job? Provide energy, all right. Provide light, okay. Provide warmth, yes. When the sun is doing its job, it's doing all those things, right? It allows, it allows growth. It allows nourishment. It allows warmth. It allows a multitude of those things that we have already enumerated in this space. And what if the sun decided to quit doing its job? We wouldn't have any warmth. We wouldn't have any growth. We wouldn't have any light. And we wouldn't have all of those other things that you enumerated. Now, what if the heavenly sun refused to do its job? Did you know that when Jesus died on the cross, and you can put it up now, Roy, the son refused to do his job. Did you know this? Matthew chapter 27, verse 45. Matthew chapter 27, verse 45. Matthew chapter 27, verse 45. Says that there was a moment a period of time where Jesus on the cross caused the sun to quit. It was the middle of the day and the sun quit doing its job. You can't say it was an eclipse. I think there's an eclipse that's coming up. I feel like there was a, an eclipse like a week or so ago. So it didn't happen yet? It's still coming up? On the 8th? Okay. So y'all been paying attention to the fact that there's an eclipse coming. People are very fascinated with eclipse. And is it kind of strange to you that you have to be in a certain place in order to see it? I mean, if something is blocking the sun, shouldn't everybody in the sun be blocked as well? I mean, y'all, if, but I mean, it's the same sun. We all seen the same sun, but it's blocked for you, but not blocked for me. You in darkness, but I'm in light. And eclipse is coming. There are some people that said, well, you know, when Jesus was dying on the cross and the sun stopped shining, that was just an eclipse. Okay, let's see how long this eclipse lasts. Because the eclipse that's coming up, y'all know how long it's supposed to last? Anybody? I got 14 minutes. Four minutes and 28 seconds. Seconds in some place. It'll be seconds in some place. Minutes in other place. And maybe the longest period of time might even get up to 14 minutes. That's the longest period of time. Let's see how long the son refused to do his job. Jesus is on the cross. This is Matthew 27 and 45. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. Let me tell you what time the sixth hour is. The sixth hour is noon. The reason the sixth hour is noon is because the first hour of the day starts with the first hour of sunlight. They don't have, you know, they didn't have a Timex back then. They didn't have a Casio. Anybody? Anybody got, got a Casio? Don't y'all act like, don't do that. Don't act like you're too good for Casio. Anybody, anybody have one of those Casio uh, uh, calculator watches back in the day? No? Brother Harris, you didn't have a Casio calculator watch back in the day? It's just, you probably don't even know about Casio. Oh, your brother had one. Yeah. See, oh, okay. I think I'm right in the age range that maybe y'all weren't into the calculator watch, but it was of my generation and you too young, and I don't know if you... Anyway, I digress. Verse 1 and So, they counted the days, the hours of the days, based on when the sun rose. So, this, this sixth hour would have been noon, ninth hour, three hours later, then would be... There you go. It's not a trick question. If, if the sixth hour is noon, and it's three hours later, at the ninth hour, it's three o'clock. So, from... Noon to 3 p.m., the sun quit doing his job, refused to shine. 
And you know it couldn't be an eclipse because an eclipse at its longest will only last a couple minutes, not a couple of hours. It is nature's very response to the fact that the son of the one true living God is in the process of dying. We know that Jesus and nature are tied because remember when he was on the boat and the wind and wave were crashing, he got up and spoke to nature. Y'all remember what he said? Peace, be still. And nature itself was like, we'll be easy. We'll calm down. I'm sorry. I didn't see you in that boat. You was in the back sleeping. I didn't know you were there. <laughs> All of this is part of fulfilling prophecy. I talked about this last time that I was in, uh, before you, as Jesus dies on the cross, he is fulfilling prophecy. This is very important because God is a God of his word. If he said it, he'll bring it to pass. God is a God of his word. If he said it, he'll bring it to pass. God is a God of his word. If he said it, he'll bring it to pass. All right, you're like, well, where did he say it? He said it in Amos chapter 8, verse 9. Here's, here's what the prophet says in Amos chapter 8, verse 9. On that day says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. Can I just put a, just a little pin right here for a moment? Uh, isn't it interesting that the Roman soldiers and Pontius Pilate and Herod and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and Judas and all these other people thought they were bringing Jesus to a place he shouldn't be, and everything they were doing was bringing him to the place where he was supposed to be anyway. Okay, y'all missed that whole point. It is the very embodiment of what they meant for evil. I thought I had some Bible readers in here. God works it for your good. Okay, all right. All right. Okay, so. So the darkness is a symbolism. In Scripture, darkness symbolizes judgment, mourning, and an evil presence. The darkness during Jesus' crucifixion reflects the God's judgment on sin and creation itself, mourning the death of Jesus. So that's what happens. The sun refuses to shine for three hours. The next thing that happens is... Uh, how do I want to describe this? You ever, you ever been somewhere and you see a do not enter sign? Hey, Roy, you, you can put my temple up now. You ever, you ever been somewhere and you saw a do not enter sign? Ever make you want to enter? <laughs> You'll be like, what is back there? What is, what secret y'all, secret y'all holding in the back of that Walmart? I want to see what's in there. <laughs> have you ever been granted access to some, to a place that you previously did not have access to? The next thing that happens, next thing that happens is, Matthew 27 and 51. Matthew 27 and 51, and I'm going to need to stay in this space for, for a moment because I need to properly explain what's happening here. Matthew 27, 51. Matthew 27, 51. It says, y'all have it, Matthew 27, 51? I know, I know you got your Bible apps if you don't have your Bible. I know you got it. It says, at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Jesus dies on the cross, yields up the ghost, and in the process of it, it says that the veil, the curtain in the temple was ripped in two. I know you're like, they had a curtain in the temple. What's the big deal? Well, you got to understand the temple. So we have here a, 
a rendering, so to speak, of what the temple uh, would have looked like. In this temple, a very important aspect of believing in God was something called making sacrifices. If you believed in God, you made sacrifices. You made sacrifices of atonement, sacrifices for forget what. And so if you were some of the, some of the five most used animals for sacrifice because they wouldn't sacrifice people, although in some religions they sacrifice people too. They sacrifice people, they sacrifice women, they sacrifice men, they sacrifice virgins, they sacrifice um, babies, they, they sacrifice people. But in Christianity, uh, they didn't sacrifice people, they sacrificed animals. And, those, and that sacrificial offering was made to the Lord for atonement. So, it was five primary things that they sacrificed in terms of animals. They sacrificed lambs. Lambs were one of the things that they, they sacrificed, uh, and most of the time it was lambs were considered burnt offerings. Uh, I think it's because they're going to eat it later. Cooking it up. They were used all the way back since Passover sacrifices. When, remember, uh, in order for the death angel to pass over when the children, let me back up for a moment. I'm taking for granted that you know this story. Uh, when Moses was in the process of delivering God's children from Egypt, one of the, was it the 10th plague? The 10th and final plague? I believe it was the 10th and final plague. Yes, the 10th and final plague. Y'all can check me on that. Uh, the 10th and final plague was God sent the death angel. It was. It was the 10th. And if you had sacked, if you had the blood of the lamb on your doorpost, the death angel was coming through Egypt. And every house that did not have the lamb's blood on the doorpost, the death angel would stop by that house and kill the firstborn son. It's in the Bible. But the Israelites, the Hebrews, they put the lamb's blood on the doorpost. If you put the lamb's blood on the doorpost, that means you had to kill a lamb. So that's how that portion of the sacrifice comes in. You sacrifice the lamb, it's part of the Passover. It was, it was reverence to God, but it was also uh, an atonement for sin. So it was a lamb. It was also the bull. A bull was, uh, and also, understanding sacrifices is levels to this. It's levels to sacrifice, and it's also levels to what you sacrifice, because just like now, everybody's money wasn't the same. And if you had a little bit more money and influence, you could sacrifice this next thing, a young bull. Because, they, they, you know, a young bull would be more expensive. So if you, really, uh, if you really want atonement for your sins and you got some money, you sacrifice the young bull. All right? Not only young bull, they would sacrifice goats. Do I have any goat eaters in the house? I know it's more than two goat eaters in here. Come on. In our connected cameras, do I have any goat eaters? Y'all let me know in the connected cameras. Let me know how you like your goat fix. Fried, sauteed, in a, in a stew, maybe? Barbecue goat? Why not? They sacrifice a goat. And once a year, once a year, they will pick one goat that should have been sacrificed and they would release that goat into the wild, carrying, in their belief, all of the sins of the nation, and they'd release it into the wild to go free. And that goat that they would release was known as a, anybody want to guess? A scapegoat. You see, you see how stuff has deep roots in, in history? So, and then there was the doves. Or pigeons, once again, depending on what your money was. If you had a little bit more money, give me that dove right there. If you check your account, and you was like, you only got $19. Ain't even enough to get. Uh, Y'all ever have right up under, right up under the, like right up under, you can't, can't even get $20 out because you're right up under. You know, I got $19.18. You're like, like right up under. 
See, the ATMs are fancy now. You can get fives and tens, but back in the day, you could only get a 20. You got $12 sitting in there. Can't even get to it because you don't. I, you know what? I don't took a brother back. Hold on. Let me, I digress. But if you didn't have as much and you couldn't get a dub, you get the pigeon. Oh, and lastly, you get a ram. And a ram was not just for sin. A ram was a sacrifice for guilt. Then there were grain offerings. You know, those grain offerings uh, were flour. Um, frankincense was included in that. Um, wheat, grain, you know, th those kind of things. When grain offerings, uh, peace, offer uh, peace offerings, uh, was a combination of, of animals. Then there were drink offerings that you could bring, you know, drink and wine and, and make that a part. That, but a drink offering could only be a part of the offering. It couldn't be the offering itself. All oh, this is good information for y'all to know. And then there were first fruits and tithe. Yes, tithe, even back then, were a part of what people would sacrifice along with fruits and vegetables and things of that nature. So depending on where you were uh, socially, depending on where you were economically, it would depend on what your sacrifice was. But everybody had to have a sacrifice. It was the only way to be cleansed of your sins. Everybody that believed in God had to have something to sacrifice. Everybody that believed in God had to have something to sacrifice because it was the only way to be forgiven of your sins, to have a sacrifice on your behalf. All right, now let's go back. Matthew 27 and 51. It says, at that moment, Jesus dies. And at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, I want to explain this temple just a little bit more because I, it's just good information for you to have. There were different courts. There were different courts. There's the outer court. See, okay, what, what we have here is the outer court. This outer court, this area is where you would buy your sacrifices. Remember when Jesus turned over tables? He was in the outer court because the deeper you get into the temple, you don't buy the sacrifices anymore. You're supposed to already have them. And you could only get deeper into the temple uh, if you had a position or a status. So on the, on the outer part of it, Gentiles, people that were not Jews, everybody could come to, to the outer. Then when you got to the next part of it, that's as far as the women could go. Then when you got to the next part, when you got to the next court, that's where the men could go. Then when you got to the next part, inside what was called the holy place, that's where the priest could go. And then there was a place in there, I used to hear you teach this there, called the Holy of Holies. So on the outside, everybody could come. Gentiles, people did it, everybody could come. You go a little further, the women, but the Jewish women. Go a little further, the men. Then when you get to the holy temple, just the priests and the Levites, because the Levites were priests. And then within that temple, within that building, within this building here, within this building here, that's the holy place. And within that place was something called the Holy of Holies. In front of the Holy of Holies was a huge curtain. Matter of fact, you, you can put my curtain up now, Roy, was a huge curtain called the veil. See, this is good for Christians to know. We got so much, uh, so much preaching and teaching about things, but not basic biblical knowledge. Within that, within that, within that holy place, there was a big curtain, a veil, and behind that veil was called the Holy of Holies, and only the high priest could go behind that, that veil, and only he could do that once a year. Because behind that veil was considered to walk into the very Shekinah glory of the Lord. The Shekinah glory means the presence of God. And they would have to tie a rope 
They had to tie a rope around the high priest's waist because it was possible that he would be so overwhelmed by being in the Holy of Holies and the very presence of the Lord, the Shekinah glory, that he passed out. And if they didn't feel a tug every now and then, they know we better start pulling them out. And that once a year, that priest would go in to make grand atonement for everybody. But even before then, remember, the priest had to sacrifice. So essentially, nobody could go to God but the priest and the high priest. And when Jesus died on the cross, the veil got ripped. Which means we no longer needed a sacrifice because Jesus was the Lamb of God sacrifice. Which means, my brother and sister, we don't need a middleman or a middlewoman anymore. When you want to experience the presence of God, you call on him yourself. When you need to be forgiven of your sins, you don't need a goat or a lamb or a dove or a pigeon or uh, any of those other things because Jesus was the sacrificial lamb that paid it all. And all to him we owe. So that's so when Jesus, so when Jesus yielded up the ghost, folded his, folded his head into the lock of his shoulders, the, the veil got ripped. And we no longer need it. We no longer needed a priest to go on our behalf. We no longer needed a priest to go on your behalf. And I and y'all, I'm so glad of that. I do my best as your pastor, but it makes me feel good in my soul to know that you can call Jesus for yourself. Y'all ever, y'all ever needed somebody and couldn't get them on the phone? Don't y'all, don't y'all do this? You ever needed somebody and they didn't return your text? You ever needed somebody, but it was too late at night? But when the veil got ripped, it meant if I can't answer your call, there's a Savior that still can. When the veil got, I, I'm going to try, try to hold myself here. When the veil got ripped, it meant that if somebody can't answer your text, God can still answer your call. Do you see why this is important for us to know? So when somebody asks you, hey, why don't, why don't y'all believe in a priest? Because when Jesus died, the veil got ripped and I didn't need one. Okay. All right. And one of the last things, it said it got ripped from top to bottom. I need you to understand, this veil would have been massive. It would have been massive. It was thick. It was, it was big, tall, massive, thick. And when it got ripped from top to bottom, that was God showing, man did not do this. I did. So, all right. Here's the last one that I will discuss. This is the one, this is the one that will probably have you with the most questions that I don't have answers to, but it's in the Bible, so I will cover it, all right? Okay, this is what happens next. Matthew 27, 52 through 53. Just go to the next two verses. Matthew 27, 52, 53. And then next week, next week, well, next week I'm going to be in Charlotte preaching revival. Uh, but uh, Reverend Outlaw is going to be teaching. She didn't know that. She just found out. So <laughs> she's like, you know, what? So, okay. Matthew 27, 52 through 53. And I, and I, I am I'm very thankful that we have some very um, gifted and phenomenal teachers at, at Lewis Chapel. Uh, so, thank you, Reverend Outlaw. Uh, 
Thank you, Reverend Odom. Thank you, Reverend Abraham. And uh, to the rest of the minister, if you wanted your name called, you should have been in Bible study. All right, let, let, let's keep going. Um, Matthew 27, 52 through 53, although I will, uh, I will call uh, Sister, uh, I mean, Reverend, Reverend McKenzie and Reverend uh, Spivey, who helped teach our uh, noonday Bible study. Now, I want y'all to hear what happened. Well, before I tell you what happened, let me ask y'all this. I've asked y'all this before. I ask it again. Y'all watch scary movies? What do you think the, like the top five most popular scary movies are, like genres of scary movies? Exorcist, which is paranormal. Okay, you're right. Paranormal is one of them. Huh? Friday the 13th, that's called a slasher. Yeah, that, 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 that's one of them. Chainsaw Massacre, that's uh, crazy people. Yeah, that's, that, yeah that's, that's monsters, so to speak. Witchcraft is another one of them. And one of the most popular ones, it has a long-standing series on right now, zombies. 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 Y'all don't know what zombies are? The living, walking dead. I want to eat your brains. Y'all haven't? Like The Walking Dead, one of the longest running shows on TV right now. Y'all don't know what I'm... I want you to catch this. The sun has refused to shine. The Bible tells us in that same verse, and there was a massive earthquake which is not uncommon from what I understand because Palestine is on a, uh, is on a natural uh, fault line. So you have these things that are, that are playing out. The sun is not shining. There's been a massive earthquake. Are you? It's dark. We had an earthquake. Now let's read Matthew 27, 52 and 53. It says, and the tombs were open. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to people. It's right there in the text. Now, and I will say this. Matthew is the only gospel that gives this account, but it's in the Bible. Are y'all getting this? The sun refused to shine. There was a great massive earthquake. Most tombs were in rock, which means it shook and opened up all those tombs. And then it said that the saints, ah, whew, uh, I wonder who living in my house now. Let me go. <laughs> y'all, they don't. Did y'all know that was there? I don't really know what to do with that. The Bible does not elaborate on their physical state. We don't know what they look like. We don't know if they were rotted. We don't know if they were, like, regular. We don't know if they, there was a stench. Like, we don't know any of that. It doesn't elaborate on any of that. It just say they got up and went back into the city. Um, so that's what I'm saying. I, they, it raises questions I don't have the answers to because the Bible does not give the answers. Now, uh, I can have some speculation. If they're going back into the city and they're talking to people, they may not look because if we having a conversation, y'all, if we having a conversation, you got to have some, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't be decayed, that's the word I'm looking for, 
and I'm sitting here having a conversation with you. And at the same time, it is not that far-fetched because when Jesus was resurrected, he still had the nails in his hand, remember? Still had the piercing in his side, remember? So it is not, so you can, so you can really speculate in either direction. I don't have any answers because the Bible doesn't give any answers. We just know they got up, went back into the city, and were talking to people. So how, how many of y'all think y'all would have stayed around for a conversation? Mm-mm. 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 I told y'all, I don't mind running. At 44, I can't really run like I used to. I ran the other day. I, I ran the other day. I was just, I, I didn't feel like I was taking out the trash, and I was like, eh. I don't feel like walking all the way around there. I'm going to just jog over there. So I jog, you know, threw it in the trash, jog back around to the front door, got back in. I was like, man, my... I... These 40s are... You know, I know y'all like, wait till you get my age. Well, I'm not. I'm talking about the 40s. I'm, I'm talking about the 40s here. Yeah. My son wanted to race me the other day. I was like, I actually got to stretch now. So I'm over there stretching. He's like, come on. I'm like, I ain't pulling no muscle for you. Let me, let me, get, my, let me get myself together. But I don't mind running, and I definitely would have been running that day. Also, another question that, that comes to mind is once this time period was over, we don't know where they went. Did they go back to their graves? Did they go to heaven? Did they just keep walking around for a while? Until, like, we don't know. That's just, more, that's just more. Now, I ask these questions because that's just how I am. I want to know. Even if I can't know, I'm still going to be curious. How long did it last? Uh, yeah, so, but their ultimate fate is left up to imagination and faith. This was a sign to Jerusalem. Their appearance was a profound testimony to the reality of Jesus' resurrection. Yet it raises so many questions. And it's okay, y'all. It is okay to have questions you don't have answers to when it comes to the Bible. But lastly, lastly, remember, Jesus died. Sun refused to shine. There's a massive earthquake. The dead are resurrected. Do you know what the next earthquake is? Think about it. Three days later, three women are walking to prepare the body of Jesus. On the way, there is a massive earthquake that rolls the stone away. And immediately before a resurrection, there is a shaking. Every time within this three, within this period of these three days, there was going to be a resurrection, there was a shaking first. Well, it could be that the prelude to the resurrection in your life has to be a shaking of your life. Can I give you one more? Can I give you one more? Uh, Paul and Silas are in jail. And before they can get free, there is a shaking that happens. Sometimes the prelude to your change and the prelude to your resurrection is a shaking in your life. And the church said, amen. Everybody stand to your feet. Everybody stand to your feet. I enjoyed that teaching. That, that, that was, yeah. Now, what I, what I need to do next, what I need to do next, after Jesus resurrected,
People think the story ends right there. All you know about Thomas, who said, I won't believe. Maybe Jesus fishing, but there are other things that happened after Jesus was resurrected. And I believe one of the Gospels in, it says basically, and the half has still not been told. So next time I stand before you, I will go over, I will go over what happens in the aftermath of that resurrection before Jesus ascends into heaven to sit the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and that will conclude this resurrection examination of, of what happened when Jesus uh, was crucified, what happened when he died, and what happened after he was resurrected. And we will, and then we'll, and then we'll get back to our rooted and fruited. Uh, listen, my brother and sister, if your soul is not saved, if your soul is not saved, uh, how, how, how y'all like the, the new graphics that we're using as we go through this? It's, we, we trying new stuff, y'all. We, we trying, me and the digital media team, we, we trying some new things to see what works best for a different setting. So uh, y'all, y'all pray for us. We're doing the best we can. Uh, if your soul is not saved, if your soul is not saved, make no mistake about it. If you don't have Jesus in your life, the shaking does not need lead to resurrection and change. The shaking just leads to more shaking. Jesus is the factor that makes the shaking the making of your change. And if your soul isn't saved, I am so glad. Wherever you are, sister, brother, wherever you are, whenever you are watching and listening to this, I want you to know if your soul ain't saved, Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. You don't have to clean anything up before you accept him. You don't have to straighten anything up before you accept him. He loves you just as you are. Now, does that mean you don't have to change anything? Oh, no, there is some changing in that process. There is some changing in that process, but those things that need to change, you can't do it without him. You do it with him. He becomes your God, therefore he leads you and he guides you. But if you don't have Jesus in your life, please don't put off until tomorrow. What God has given you the opportunity to do right now. So we're going to give the benediction right after we do. If you need to give your life to Christ, just meet me right down here and let me know that you want to give your life to Christ so that we can pray the prayer of salvation with you. If you're giving your life to Christ, I'm so glad you are. Just go to lewischapel.org. That's L-E-W-I-S chapel.org. At the top of the screen, there's a place that says join. Click that. Just let us know you want to give your life to Christ. Give us your name email and phone number, and I cannot wait to reach out to you. If you are without a church home and you are in this space or you are watching us and I connect the campus, and this is the ministry where God is calling you to connect that you might continue to grow in your salvation, grow in your understanding of God, and grow in the peace that comes from being in relationship with God, then you can meet me down here, you can go to lewischapel.org, but whatever you do, don't ignore what God is ushering your life into. Now, we're going to receive our benediction by way of prayer by our site pastor, the Reverend C. David Stackhouse. Receive him by saying amen. amen. Someone tell the Lord thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Let me share a moment of gratitude for the participation and your, your kindness, your stopping by our, our spring camp that's going forth at, at the rack. J- just know this, the, <clears throat> thank you. Oh, oh Sister. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Dad. I, I need to thank uh, Sister Connie Monroe for all of the decorations that she did uh, for our Easter cantata. And Amen. Sister Campbell and Brother Harris and, uh, to, uh, and to just so many people that contributed and made that, made that day so special and so significant. Uh, so if I have not called your name, please forgive me, but you know who you are. You know what you did. I am so appreciative of you and your gifts and your talents and letting God use you. And I cannot thank you enough. God bless you. I'm sorry, Dave. Go, go ahead. It's fine. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> Sister Moore received a call f- from one of the entities like the Boys and Girls Club. We want to know that if we had room for another 40 uh, children in our, in our spring camp, um, 
God has blessed us to be filled beyond capacity. And we're excited about what's happening. Fever State is going to host our camp. They called today, and they're going to host our camp, a whole tour. And which means they're, and because we have children, they mean when you host us, you feed us. And so we're blessed. Anybody here agree that God, our God, is an awesome God? Come on, don't fool me now. I got to get out of here. Does anybody here just know that your God is an awesome God? All y'all back there, anybody know God is an awesome God? Our God is an awesome God. And so I pause now, God, to give you all the glory to give you all the praise. My soul cries hallelujah. But I heard, I heard a senior pastor preaching and the other day he said not, not just a word, but that I ought, to, I ought to, to dedicate him my life for that is my praise. And so God, right now, we close this, this Bible study and did not my heart burn as our senior pastor taught us with such clarity and with such power. We leave now, but God knows, don't let us leave the same way we came in here. Somebody shout, change, change. Change us right now. Change us and rearrange us. And hey, God, do it right, 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 right now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Somebody has some missing keys. We got some missing keys up here, so if you're missing your keys, please see us up front. We have your keys.